Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode nine and I am Amy Palco. I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland and this is my digital home from home, a place where I get to share with you my knitting practice and my knitting projects. But before we get to all of that, I have a card that I drew today for you that I would like to share. And it's from this deck here, which is the Mary L Tarot by Marie White. It's a very powerful deck with very strong imagery. I can show you some of the images there. It's very different from the traditional tarot. And the card that I drew for you today is this one, or for all of us is this one. It's the Queen of Swords. So the Queen cards in the Minor Arcana represent an inner mastery. And here we see the two, the two ravens and the eye, but we can also see here's the mouth and here's the nose. So she's very much a part of the scenery here, of the inner landscape of us. To read you a little bit from the, the guide, it says, So here sits Huggin and Munnan in the tree of life, Idrisil, protecting the spark of life within them, as we all do, reporting back to Odin at night, as we all do, as souls in exile, then freed again at death. We experience this world through eyes of separation and individuals. The face of the Queen of Swords is here in the landscape, she is everything and each one, communicating and experiencing each other in states of solve and coagula, separation and togetherness. Mundanely or profanely, this queen provides an environment where one can use their minds, have ideas, think, understand, have and gain knowledge. Eventually, this is the place between heaven and hell that one can both fall from grace and then redeem themselves, becoming experienced, ride back into eternity, a person who has completely fulfilled their will and potential. So there we go. We have the Queen of Swords with us, which is so lovely because we had the Queen last time from a different deck. And we talked a little bit there about sovereignty. But here I feel the invitation as we move into the depths of the winter solstice is really to connect with that still point within, to come home to ourselves. And, and that for me is an expression of sovereignty also. So, time for some knitting. <laughs> well, what I'm wearing today is the Ingalls sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And it's a lovely pattern. It came out a few years ago now and I knitted this. Yeah, I think I knitted this in 2018. And in fact, around about this time, probably in 2018. I've knitted it in Wensleydale, which, uh, which is a fabulous fiber. It's very silky and drapey, and it's got a beautiful shine on it. And this is in West Yorkshire Spinners, Wensleydale um, Gems in DK. The red is anyway, and that's in Ruby. And this, the contrast, is in Halo Honey DK from Ginger Twist Studios in Bourbon and Water. Now, I made quite a few modifications, so I'll just talk you through some of those. So I saw, uh, I think it was Melissa on It's Bash Tricot had also knitted this, and she had changed the shape of the body slightly, and I much preferred the, the shaping of hers. And so I decided to do the same, which meant that I missed out the short row shaping at the back. The other thing I did was when I started to do the color, the, um, I don't know whether you can see this, when I started to do the lace work, there was supposed to be lace uh, motifs in here. But when I did them, what happened was you could see the strands from the color work behind the eyelets. And I didn't like that, so I ripped it back and um, I just have my eyelets at the top and at the bottom so I don't have the eyelets in between on the colour work so that you can't see the, the strands of the contrast colour behind. The other thing I did was <laughs> I changed the sleeves. So I made a much, much longer cuff using the same, the same rib as I did at the, at the neckband, which it looks like a two by two twisted rib. Uh, just decreasing here. So it kind of created a, a little bit of a, a puff in the sleeve round here, a looser sleeve, and then coming down 
to do the full uh, cuff from yeah about just below my elbow to my wrist and I will stand up so I can show you my last modification which was the hem where you can see I've done a double I double knitted the hem and then have cast off so you can see that it sits but it's got a different shape to the original design and this uh, doubled edge double knitted edge I think gives it a really lovely finished look so there we go that's my that's my ingles <laughs> it's very lovely I do really like it I think it's perhaps the closest thing that I have to a Christmas jumper <laughs> so I thought it was only too appropriate to wear it for today <laughs> but it's a very nice one I'm really pleased with it I would say that the um the Wensleydale does uh does pill quite a lot so um I do tend to debobble it before I wear it but that's not a problem I do really like the way that it sits I like the neck line and I tend to wear a long sleeved red thermal underneath it so so there we go that's the the Ingalls sweater by Caitlin Hunter so what have I finished because I have finished something most things are works in progress right now, but I did whip up something very quickly just the other day there, and it is this. So this is the Kelowna sweater by Taralyn Morrison of, I always get this wrong, Good Night Day. I think it's Good Night Day, not Good Day Night. Good Night Day designs. <laughs> and um, I've knitted it in Adria Morpheo which is a wool alpaca silk and nylon blend, which you can see here. It's a fabulous yarn. I bought it from Emily Folds during the Knit I Knit 7 event that was on in November. Uh, it's a uh, Aran Wheat. This is the label here. Morpheo by Adria Phil. And I really liked it. I love the warmth of the grey. I hope you can see that. And then these fabulous flashes of colour. Mostly warm colours, but you do get... see if I can find some. You do get some blues as well. It's a little bit there. You do get some sort of wee pops of blues. And I held it double with this, which is Drops Brushed Alpaca silk and this is in the soft grey colourway and they say that this is Aran weight and I suppose that's because of the halo on it but really if you look at it it looks quite different from <laughs> from this Aran weight you can see there but holding the two of them together I think did give me uh, a nice sort of very light bulky weight and it's a very sort of boxy jumper it's cropped I have cinched in the the cuff here and knitted a bit of a longer cuff I think and slightly longer sleeves uh, I will probably wear this tomorrow when I'm recording a conversation about poetry with Jackie so if you want to see this worn you might want to look at my at the next video which I think is being posted over on the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast so <laughs> you're getting a preview <laughs> but it's very lovely and soft there's something one of my friends used a word um, to describe it as feathery and I think it does have a very feathery uh, feel to it it's very light it's very soft it's very warm and I really cast it on because I felt like I wanted a comfort knit. Something that could be knitted up quickly and just felt very simple and very easy to do. If you are a less experienced knitter, then I think these designs are actually very well written. Uh, I think they're easy to follow. And um, because it's on the larger needles and the, with the thicker weight yarn, then they are quite a, a quick knit. Um, so yes, it's got a slightly cinched in neck. I used the German twisted cast on to create enough give to get my head through. <laughs> Here we go. So yes, I'm really pleased with it. The yarn doesn't seem to have pulled at all, 
which is fabulous. And I just love these wee splashes of colour through it and these lovely sleeves. So that's what I've been working on and that's what I've completed and I'm very pleased with it. It's the Kelowna, Kelowna sweater by Taralyn Morrison. I will link to all of these patterns and the yarns used in the description box in my show notes. So if you want to follow up on anything that I'm talking about here, then you can go and find it there. Okay, so what am I working on? Well, I've already shared, I think, last week what I'm working on. So I've just kind of made more progress on both. I will start with this. This is the Soiree Sweater by Emily Foden. Oh dear, I'm all in a tangle. There we go. So this is what I have so far. It's rolling up quite a lot, so I'm hoping that it relaxes a bit when it blocks, which I'm sure it will. I decided to create a fade using the Nutaden yarn that I had purchased over the course of this year. Well, last few months, really. And then I've moved from the darkest yarn that I had to the lightest yarn that I had. The soiree sweater is a beautiful pattern which I've had my eye on for a long time by Emily Foden of Vi Viola Yarns and it's from this book here which is called Knits About Winter and I shall show you the finished jumper so that you can see. So you can see you have this very simple cable running up the side with this honeycomb section which is created with twisted stitches. I would say that the description of the twisted stitches in the pattern isn't great and I just and I really struggled to figure that out and I ended up looking up a YouTube tutorial so that I could see how to do it better and I would always recommend that you did that if you're struggling with something that you found in a pattern and you can't quite make sense of it then you, there will probably be a YouTube tutorial that you can pull up and you will actually see somebody creating the stitches uh, that you might have um, struggled to understand in a written form. So this is the completed, the completed jumper, there we go. So I've completed the back and I now need to work on the front. It is knitted bottom up in the round and then when you get to here you split and start to just knit the back and then I will pick up my stitches that are all on my cable already and knit up the front, completing the right and the left sides of the front separately. And then you graft together the front and the back and then you pick up your stitches round here and knit down. So that's the construction of it and it works, it's, it works very well actually, I'm very pleased with it what I've got so far. I will just also talk you through the yarn because this yarn, I know I've spoken about this yarn before, but oh my goodness. And I've been keeping an eye on what uh, the new colors, the new yarns are going to be from um, Nutaden in 2021. And the, the colors are just, oh my goodness. Okay, so stop raving about it and start <laughs> start explaining. So this at the bottom here is called Lavendula Calendula. And that was this lovely sort of shade of violet, but it's got sort of flashes of orange through it too. So I started with that and then I faded into Between Petals, which is the yarn that I had the most of, which is this one here. Isn't it lovely? It's sort of a, a peachy shade. So fading into between petals and then I faded into the very small amount I had of Goodbye Summer, which was on the outside of these little cakes here that I purchased a couple of months ago. And then from there, I have faded into my Footprints in Sand, which is this central colour here, and which I had also on the outside of these little cakes that I've also got. And then I've faded into Salt, which is this colour up here, which obviously is the inside of that, that cake there. So now I need to replicate this. I'll show you the side because isn't that pretty? 
I'm so pleased with how it's knitting up. I do think it's really very beautiful. And there we go. So now I need to start knitting on this part here. It looks very wide. <laughs> it does, it is a jumper with a lot of positive ease. So it will be one of those pieces that I'll be able to wear outside on top of other layers, I think, or I'll just be able to throw on over whatever I'm wearing inside when it gets particularly cold in the flat. <laughs> so, so yes, I'm going to be picking up from here and knitting up the front and then picking up from my sleeves. So I'm hoping to work on that over the next, over the next couple of weeks because I would really like to get this, get this finished. It's uh, an interesting yarn to knit with because it is unspun. So you can see it's not a spun yarn. And what I mean by that, to show you an example, well, I suppose this is spun, very loosely spun, but you can see it's got a bit of a twist on it. And then this would be another example of a spun yarn. So you've got individual strands that have been twisted and spun together. But this is unspun. And that means that it is actually, it can be quite fragile. So if you pull on it too hard, it will just uh, pull apart. But equally, if you put your strands together and then give them a bit of a rub, then your strand is reconnected. So you just have to be gentle with it actually. And it is a, it's a learning process I've found knitting with it because I am so used to knitting with spun yarn rather than unspun. But I've found that it's really brought me into a deeper sense of an encounter with my yarn and with my knitting. So it slowed me down, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I really deepened into the experience of it and really allowed myself to enjoy it, uh, particularly this movement through, through colour and really exploring that and enjoying it. So, so yeah, it's, it's working out beautifully. I am really pleased with it. And yeah, like I say, I'm hoping to get this, get the rest of it completed. You can see the gradations of my colours, I think. Moving down into the lavendula, calendula, but I just really, I'm just really pleased with my fade, so <laughs> I can be pleased with it. <laughs> so the other thing that I'm working on is, of course, something which you have now seen many, many times and probably, <laughs> I mean, you may be a little bit bored with it, but I can honestly say that I am not bored of it in the slightest. This is my half and half triangles wrap and I'm knitting it as part of the Caddy Jacks Knits uh, Cal, their knit along, which is called the Half Wrap Cal and it is enormous. It's enormous and I actually have done some work on it even though you might not necessarily think that but I only have this many stitches to pick up. So every time I knit a length of a row here we go. Every time I knit towards these stitches here, I get to pick one up and then knit all the way back. And so I'm picking up one of these stitches for every two rows. And I think I have maybe just maybe about 30 stitches, yeah, around about 30 stitches, I think, to pick up. So I've got about 60 rows left. And of course, every row gets slightly longer. But look at this, it's madness. It's absolutely huge. So <laughs> it's, I was gonna say it is a stealth blanket, but it's not really a stealth blanket by this point. It really is just a blanket. So <laughs> there's nothing stealthy about this. <laughs> um, I have knitted it in Holst Super Soft, which is a yarn which is spun with and then sold with its spinning oil still present in the yarn itself and so it really benefits of a good wash and block after you have after you've completed so close to completing now if you've been watching this podcast for a while you've seen this you've seen me share this lots and lots of times and you might remember that I completed this first triangle 
which is in the colourway Sweet Pea, on the autumn equinox. And so I'm going to be working on this for the next few days with the hope that I will be able to complete the second triangle, which is in the colour Cinnamon, on the winter solstice. So that's my plan. So I've got some knitting to do today and tomorrow and then winter solstice is on Monday. So I would really love to have this cast off so that by the time I see you next, which will be in the new year, <laughs> I will be able to share with you the completed half and half triangle wrap. Now, if you are considering joining in the cowl, and I highly recommend that you do because it is a, it's very much a comfort knit, but it's a, it's a process knitter's uh, dream, I would say, <laughs> because it is just a, a lot of garter stitch. But it's a free pattern from Pearl Soho. It was designed to be used with their linen quill base. However, because Pearl Soho is based in New York, and I am based on the other side of the Atlantic, I decided to go with a yarn that was a little bit more local to me and, and purchased this, which is from Denmark. And yes, I'm really enjoying it, but it is a slow knit. And I think there's a lot to be said about slow knitting, about not moving through our knits as quickly and about slowing down and really connecting, which is what I've been doing both with the soiree and obviously with this. Like I said, so that we can actually have an encounter with our knitting and that we can really deepen into a practice around it. So it's not so much about, you know, striving and pushing towards uh, the, the product, but actually engaging with the, the process of the, the knit itself. So that's what I've been enjoying with this with this knit and like I said I only got a little bit to go now but I would really love to complete it on the winter solstice so that I have one one half completed by the autumn equinox and the second by the by the winter solstice and in that way this is very much a, a an exceptionally large <laughs> blanket <laughs> that I'll be able to to wear which will you know call to mind the comfort that I managed to find in this latter part of 2020. So there we go this is the half and half wrap half and half triangles wrap and that's the that's a close-up of the sweet pea and also of the slip stitch edge that I have that was my modification and that is there we go that's the the cinnamon. So this will really bloom and puff up a little bit and soften uh, after it's had a good wash. So there we go. That's my two works in progress. Like I said, not uh, not projects that you haven't seen before, but uh, pieces that are, are longer and take longer and are a slower experience. And I think, like I said, that's something to be relished and enjoyed and certainly gives me a lot of comfort as I move through the end days of 2020. So, what's next? Well, what's next is this. And this is One Dark Blue Night, and it's by Sarah Bauer. And you might recall that in the last episode, I have a, had a giveaway and everybody that entered into that was asked to share what their favourite fairy story was and if they felt like uh, sharing why, so they could win this pattern that Sarah has very kindly given to me to give away to you. So this is released tomorrow and I am going to be knitting it. I'll show you what I'm going to be knitting in it in, the first, in, in an instant, but before that, I will share with you who won the pattern. So that would be Andrea Britz. Andrea, congratulations. I will uh, send, if you could get in touch with me and send me your details, we'll be able to uh, get these, get your pattern sent off to you. So if you could email me at amy at amypalco.com, I will be able to get you this. 
which is fabulous. Thank you very much, Sarah. Your collection, which is all based on Clarissa Pinkola Stasey's work, Women Who Run With The Wolves, which is my favourite book, <laughs> um, are absolutely exquisite and I highly recommend that everybody goes and checks them out. I will link to them, of course, in the description box so that you can go and explore those also. But like I said, this is going to be my next cast on and I am going to be using two little minis that I was given as part of my advent this year. So my mum and I do a yarn advent with one another and this year we decided that we were going to choose a piece of art and that we would base our colour story for the advent on that piece of art. So I will show you what I chose, which is this wonderful image here by Alphonse Mucha. And these are some of the colours that were part of that colour story. And these are two of the minis that my mum has given me. Aren't they lovely? So, these are from John Arbin and they are Yarnadelic, which is 100% Falklands Merino. And these are the 25 gram minis. So this is Pink Moon. And this is Wondrous Place. So Wondrous Place is this, oh, just like, it's almost like a blood orange kind of colour, I think. And this one here, Pink Moon, actually has some like blue tones to it. I thought how perfect to knit a, a design that has the moon phases using a yarn called Pink Moon and Wondrous Place. So those are two of my colours and the third colour, which is going to be the contrast, is going to be my uh, Priscelli, my leftover Priscelli, and this is in the colour Basalt, and this is Garthenor yarn, which is a mix between Polworth and Romney. And you can see it's quite a loose ply, and it's so soft, and it's just so lovely to work with. So I thought those would be a really lovely combination for my hat, and that I might add this little faux fur pom-pom on the top which I also got as part of my advent so that's what I'm looking at just now Let's see if I can show you these any better there we go <laughs> aren't they so pretty so yes that's what I'm going to be knitting and I'll show you just briefly um the Priscelli what like I said was a leftover for me because I knitted this which is a Selbu cowl by Inga Sky of the Knitting Traditions podcast. And it was a test knit and it's so lovely. And this is knit in the Priscelli. This is the basalt and this color here is called Tilia. And this was a test knit, but that test knit is now finished and the pattern has been published. So I will also pop a link to the published pattern on Ravelry so that you can you can do this as well. It's very lovely and soft and nice to wear up at your neck. Perfect for these kind of chillier climbs now that, uh, now that we're descending into winter. So we have the giveaway. Andrea, well done. Congratulations. You've got the pattern. That's going to be my next knit also. And what do I have up next for us? Oh, it's I won a prize as part of a giveaway, <laughs> which isn't that amazing. So I woke up the other morning there and realized that I'd been tagged in a post on Instagram and I clicked through on it and discovered that my friend Miri from uh, our knit night had won a giveaway and the comment that she had won with was tagging me. And because of that, she won the main prize and I have won a little prize. So I'm getting a lovely skein of River Knits four ply and a beautiful little knitting pouch. So I'm really excited about that. And it's being the giveaway was done by a company called beanieboat.com. And so they've got a new maker's corner and they're selling some beautiful yarns. Uh, they've got Ducky Darling, River Knits, Malabrigo, uh, Tumeki and Gideant yarns and I will be popping a link to them in also in the description box so that you can check them out but I was just going to read for you their um, 
their description of, on their about page because it's so lovely and I think it gives you a good sense of who they are as a company. The beanie boat all started with an I wish I could sentence. All the woolly warmth is lovingly handmade by Nikki who walked away from the corporate world to be poorer but infinitely happier. The soapy goodness delights are equally lovingly handcrafted by Sharon who after a career in public service decided that a slower life was the life for her. All our wares are given the sniff of approval by Jackson, a rescue staffy who had an absolutely horrendous first year of life. He's now living his best life. Your support of our little adventure is appreciated hugely. Isn't that delightful? So I will link to their, uh, their Maker's Corner in the description box so that you can go and check them out as well because they are ever so lovely and their stock is really beautiful and I think you're bound to find something there that you that you like and hopefully on the next if the post behaves <laughs> I think the post is struggling everywhere right now but if the post behaves then hopefully I'll have my uh, giveaway prize to show you on the next episode. Uh, what do I have next? So next uh, well one of the reasons why I have only got one finished object and it was the it was the bulky weight sweater and I didn't get as much done of the soiree as I had hoped is because I've been busy, busy, busy working on the My Word Goddess readings. I mentioned these in the last episode, but these are my offerings that I give at the end of the year. So they're only ever available in December and January and I've been offering them for the last 10 years which is amazing to me. And uh, they uh, connect you with a goddess guide for your year. And the whole idea of them is that they help you to discern what your word of the year might be. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what my word was and what my new word is going to be in the next episode. But I did just want to let you know that the My Word Goddess readings are now available. They, I will link to them again and that if you want to receive your My Word Goddess reading by the new year, then you need to put your order in by this coming Friday, which of course is Christmas. So, so I need your order in by Christmas in order to make sure that you will receive your reading by the new year. Okay, so what else? <laughs> well, lastly, actually, what was it lastly? Maybe, almost lastly. <laughs> I've been doing a poetry advent with my friend Jackie over at Caddy Jack's Knits. And so that's been done through Instagram. So every day she's, she or I have been posting a poem in our Instagram stories. And then on Sundays, we've been meeting for a poetry conversation. Now I shared our poetry conversation here last Sunday and the Sunday before that we were over at Caddy Jack's Knits and this Sunday tomorrow we will be back over at Caddy Jack's Knits and I think Caitlin's going to join us too which will be lovely. So there we really just talk about the poems that we chose and why we chose them and why we love them and it's just such a joy to be able to share the gift of poetry with everybody so I hope that you'll be able to tune in for that. And we also are doing a Zoom gathering on Monday, which is the winter solstice. So you'll be invited to bring along your knitting and a, perhaps a poem or two that you would like to share with us. So we're going to be doing that and I will confirm, I think we're doing it, oh, I can't quite remember what time we're doing that for. Let me, I will double check that <laughs> and I will put that uh, down here so that you'll see this later. <laughs> Okay, so that's the Poetry Advent. If you have missed any of the poems as part of the Advent, then I have been saving them as a highlight on the Poetry Advent on my Instagram profile. And I believe that that's available on the Caddy Jack's Knits profile also. So you can go back and you can see all of the poems that have been shared up to this moment. There'll be another one shared today and one more tomorrow and then that'll be us. But uh, it's been such a joy and I hope that you have enjoyed it as much as we have. Okay, so that brings us up to some whiskey <laughs> and some poetry <laughs> because it's Christmas. <laughs> 
So when I was thinking about uh, what, how I wanted to complete today's episode, because this episode is the last one that goes out this year, and I've been thinking about doing a podcast for a long time, but it was really only this year that um, I got up the courage to do it, and you have all received me so incredibly well and so beautifully. I feel so well met, and I hope that you have too. So I really just wanted to raise a glass this is a Port Charlotte, which is a glass of Islay whiskey. Isla is an island off the west coast in the Inner Hebrides. And this beautiful glass I was given by my children last year from the Design Exchange through in Glasgow. And actually I got this Port Charlotte uh, whiskey from my children for my birthday this year. So I thought what we would do is we would have a beautiful poem by, who else? <laughs> John O'Donoghue, which is the last poem in the book, and then we would have a wee sip of whiskey and, and a toast. So the poem that I've, sh I've chosen to share with you for our last one of the year, last one of 2020, is called Vespers. And Vespers really refers to uh, the prayers in the evening. So I really feel as though we're in the evening of the year now, that we're seeing the year out. And as we're entering into the still point of the winter solstice, this feels like an appropriate poem to usher us into that. So, Vespers. As light departs to let the earth be one with night, silence deepens in the mind and thoughts grow slow. The basket of twilight brims over with colours, gathered from within the secret meadows of the day and offered like blessings to the gathering tenebrae. After the day's frenzy, may the heart grow still, gracious in thought for all the day brought, surprises that dawn could never have dreamed, the blue silence that came to still the mind, the quiver of mystery at the edge of a glimpse, the golden echoes of worlds beyond voices, tense faces unable to hide what gripped the heart, the abrupt hurt the abrupt cut of a glance or a phrase that hurt. The flame of longing that distance darkened. Bouquets of memory that gathered on the heart's altar. The thorn of sigh of absence in the rose of dream. And the whole while the unknown underworld of the mind turning slowly in its secret orbit. May the blessing of sleep bring refreshment and release and the angel of the moon call the rivers of dream to soften the hardened earth of the outside life. Disentangle from the trapped nets the hurt and sorrow and awaken the young soul for the new tomorrow. Well, my lovelies, I'm raising a dram to you all today and on the winter solstice and on Christmas and wishing you a very happy Hogmanay Until 2021, my loves. <laughs>